Since when am I Faust? Chapter 2, Part 2 After I found a place to hide my new toy, I continued towards the dining hall. Canterlock Castle was a lot larger than I initially imagined. Just walking to the dining hall to get breakfast took five minutes. Approaching the doors, I took a deep breath. Here we go. Then I pushed the doors open and walked inside. At the far end of the room, Tia sat at the edge of the table and sipped on a cup of tea while she read the morning paper. As I opened the door, she glanced up at me and gave me a satisfied smile. I was beginning to worry that it was all another dream. I shrugged. Sorry, Tia. You're stuck with me. Glad to hear it, Mother. Is there anything I can get you? I made pancakes. As she said this, she lifted her decorative treats, and I heard Lauren call out. <sighs> Tia made pancakes? Yes, please! I smiled, holding back a grin at the childish antics of the mare in my head. Finding a place at the table, I sat down and said, Sure, I'll have some, but I'm not too hungry yet, so I'll only have one. Celestia nodded and prepared a plate for me. The pancakes came covered in syrup and had a whipping cream smiley face. I grinned and began eating. Swallowing a bite, I washed the food down with some orange juice. So, Tia, how does your typical day go? The alicorn gave a strained smile, and she let out a quiet groan. Mother, please don't remind me of my duties. They're hardly enjoyable enough while doing them. I frowned and reached up to tap my chin. All right then. Oh, I know. Have you gotten to make any good friends over the past years? <laughs> yes, quite a few. And some of them started simply as students at the school for gifted unicorns. Her gentle smile slowly turned sad, and she looked down at the paper that she was reading. However, as much as I cherish them, I have to let go. Our little ponies only live so long, after all. Looking at her eyes, I felt sympathy for her. I couldn't possibly begin to imagine how she felt, but at the very least, I could try to comfort her. I reached over and patted her on the shoulder. Well, Tia, you've got me, Luna, and Cadence now, so at least you're not alone. She looked at me with a confused expression. Who told you about Cadence? I scrunched my muzzle and looked to the side. Oh, uh, Luna did, after you went to sleep. Oops. Suddenly, green fire came blazing through the window, and I immediately ducked for cover. It's not every day that you see a flame about the size of a football go dancing around the room. It found its place in front of Celestia, materializing into a letter. The white alicorn glanced in my direction and started to laugh. Oh, mother. Don't worry, it's only a piece of paper. Celestia teased, shaking the letter around in her magical grip. It, it's not funny, the thing almost hit me. I grumbled. Besides, paper cuts are the worst. I said the last part quietly and mostly to myself, but the corner of Tia's lip curved upward as I said it. Pouring herself some tea, she said, Mother, this spell can't hurt ponies, even if it comes directly into contact with them. I gave her an annoyed stare and tried to change the subject. So, what does it say? Hmm, what's he? Dear Princess Celestia, Today I learned that it's not good to jump to conclusions. You have to find out all the facts before saying some pony did something, and if you don't, you can end up blaming some pony for something that they never did. This could hurt their feelings and it could make you feel really foolish. So from now on, I will always make sure to get all the facts. From Pinkie Pie. Playing ignorant, I took a bite of my pancakes and said, That's a nice letter. Is that one of the students at the school that you were telling me about? Celestia smiled and put the piece of paper down. Oh, no, Mother. Pinkie Pie's in her early 20s. I couldn't help but tilt my head to the side in shock. Huh. Really? And Celestia went a bit curious at my odd reaction. Leaning forward, she rested her head on her hooves and said, If you don't mind me asking, Mother, why does that seem so surprising to you? I shrugged, grabbing another bite of my meal. <sighs> it just seems like a bit of common knowledge for some pony in their adult age. Celestia gave me another one of her patented mischief grins. <sighs> Mother, just because you've had the years to figure things out doesn't mean that every pony else has had as much time to do so. <sighs> the hell does that mean? Was that an attempt at a shot? Yeah, it was a shot. I'm 18! I rolled my eyes and leaned on the edge of the table, holding my cheek with my hoof. I looked at her with a sly smile. So, how's that schedule looking for you? Tia frowned at me, bringing up her duties again. Well, I have breakfast, court, then lunch, then court once more, that shift will last for three hours, then after that I will go and finish the paperwork recording all the political details throughout the day. When I heard that, I was surprised. Until now, I had thought Sunbutt just sat on a rail behind all day. I leaned forward with shock clearly evident on my face. Wow, so you do that every day? She chuckled. <laughs> no, no, I only have the schedule on Sundays. Usually I try to find a way to attend parties, make public appearances, and travel aboard to get out of that routine. <sighs> yeah, I can see why. I nodded. A little bell rang beside Celestia's teacup, signaling that breakfast was over. Uh, I have to get going. 
Do you want to come along or continue to readjust? After discovering more details about her job, I must say that I was not exactly eager to take part in it. Thinking of an excuse, I said, I think I'll stay here to practice my magic. It's been years since I've done so. I don't even think I remember how to do it. To my relief, she seemed satisfied with my answer. She got up and began walking to the doors. If you find that you're having any trouble with magic, just let me know, and I'll teach you how. Or I could get you to learn from Twilight, although I don't know how she would react to the task of teaching you. Okay, thanks for the offer. I'll see what I can do first, though. I'll see you later. The same to you, Mother. With that, Celestia walked out to go to the royal court. Later on, I made my way up to the room that I first woke up in. There was a strange familiarity that I seemed to enjoy, and the view from the balcony was also quite stunning. Walking across the room, I spotted the mirror and chuckled to myself. When I first saw my reflection, I thought my life was over, and that there would be no good to come to me ever again. But even though it's only been one day, I could confidently say that I was wrong. I trotted over to the polished silver with an excited grin. I looked at the mirror and asked aloud, So, how do I use magic? Oh, Alex, are you sure you really want to learn? Lauren teased, and I eagerly jumped towards the mirror. Of course I do! <laughs> Alright, give me control for a moment. I mentally stepped aside and the alicorn took her place in front of our reflection. Alright Alex, let's start off with something simple. Her horn lit up with a fiery glow and little lights resembling embers formed around it. Her aura seemed to chime in the air, and she smiled at my would-be dumbfounded expression. Turning to the inside of the room, I watched as a drawer glowed in the same light and slid open. Then she lifted an old book out. How did you even know that was there? She giggled at my question. Because it's mine, silly. I thought you would have put that together by now. But aren't you like, really old? Shouldn't this stuff be long gone by now? Her smile dropped, and she looked back at her reflection with an unamused stare. Do you want me to teach you magic or not? Oh, sorry ma'am. She nodded. Right, so notice how the book is being held in my aura? Yes. I'm doing this by visualizing the result that I want and unifying it with my mana. Getting it to work is a matter of balance and skill. You already have a live demonstration, so you can feel how the connection is made. So with enough practice, the objects that you lift will become as natural as moving an arm or leg. The mayor spun the book in the air and set it down onto the bed across the room to emphasize her point. Go ahead, give it a try. She gave me back control and I looked up at my target. I started to imagine the book floating above the bed and focused our power to the tip of our horn. I felt a slight strain on my mind, almost as if a weight had been put on it, but I continued anyway. In a daydream-like state, I saw the book rise off of the bed and spin around. I was surprised, and a wide smile stretched across my face as I said, Yes, I did it! Good job. It looks like you can listen after all. Hey, I was freaking out back then. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, I know. Suddenly, I heard someone at the side of the room say, Knock, knock. And the door swung open. I turned looking towards the sound and saw a pink alicorn standing in the doorway. She smiled at me, and I looked at her hoping she didn't hear me talking to myself. I looked into her eyes and became somewhat curious as to why she was here. Tilting my head upwards, I said, Um, hello? The mayor giggled at the expression on my face. Uh, hello, my name is Cadence. So I see I told me I was likely to find you up here. And it's so nice to finally meet you, Lauren. I've heard so much about you. She said this, walking over to me, and as she got close, I extended my foreleg to shake her hoof. What I didn't expect was to be quickly wrapped in another hug. I hesitated, a bit surprised by the sudden embrace, but a moment later I loosened up and returned the hug. After a second or so, we pulled apart, and she smiled happily. Dropping her forelegs back down, the pink alicorn finally seemed to take in her surroundings. She turned her attention to me and glanced around the room with visible curiosity. With the heavy layers of dust, I started to feel somewhat self-conscious. Perhaps it was Lauren's emotions leaking through again, being since it was her stuff from who knows when, but even so, I was starting to feel uncomfortable. It was like my room was being inspected. I started swinging my front leg back and forth as I awkwardly looked down. Sorry about the dust. I guess I really let this place go. Caden struggled at my sad attempt at a joke, then looked up at me with a questioning stare. So, what are you doing up here anyway? Looking up, I shrugged. Just some magic practice. <laughs> really? Like what? I felt a blush rush over me as I began to explain. It's basic levitation. The world that I was in didn't have magic, so gradually I forgot over time. I was a bit embarrassed to practice anywhere else. Oh, okay. So have you made any progress? She asked, tilting her head. I looked up at her with a brightened smile. Actually, yeah. In fact, I think I could grab all the dust in this room and put it into one spot. The pink mare smirked as she leaned on one side. Well, you could try, but I doubt it. The strain from holding thousands of individual particles alone would be ridiculous. I nudged her side. 
I got your ten bits, I can do it. She raised an eyebrow at my confidence and a smirk crossed her face. Oh, you're on. Celestia had the unfortunate duties of day court. Each noble citizen was demanding their wants to be satisfied like a rotten child demanding of their parents. Currently, the headache she was dealing with was a noble pony by the name of Currency Driver. He was a banker who wanted the royal funds to go to building a private pool on his property. To say the least, the selfish and ridiculous things ponies would come up with boggled Celestia's mind. So, you see, your highness, a pool within my residence would be a logical thing to fund because I would be able to uplift the guests who come over. Rubbing her temple, Celestia began to wonder what other ludicrous things would arise within her courts. Every day was torture, dealing with these ponies who felt like they deserved favors from royalty. But at least she knew nothing could be as ridiculous as that pony who claimed Celestia should seal Luna on the moon again for rejecting his request to tear down an orphanage in favor of a recreation center. Suddenly, the doors to the throne room burst open, and two frantic alicorns ran inside. Auntie, we need your help. Where can we put this? Cadence quickly said, pointing to a faint ember glow held in Faust's telekinesis. What is it? The crimson-maned alicorn suddenly spoke up. It's a dust bomb! She seemed to be under a lot of strain. Uh, a what? Celestia turned her head in confusion. Auntie, that speck is all the dust from her room collected in a one spot. If she lets go, then it'll explode. Hope fluttered in the co-ruler's chest. Perhaps this stupid matter could get her out of day court, so turning to the stallion in front of her, Celestia said... I'm sorry, Currency, but our meeting will have to be postponed. This got a grumble out of the noble, but he was too cowardly to protest against the princess directly. <sighs> Your Highness, if I may so ask, who is that? Currency stated, pointing a huff at the newest alicorn in Equestria. That, my little pony, would be my mother. It took a couple of seconds for the stallion to register what that meant, and he quickly turned to Lauren's direction. His eyes seemed to expand to unreal proportions, and he slammed his face into the red carpet. He bowed so suddenly that his head bounced off the ground, and he became unconscious. The pitiful sight of the noble who knocked himself out brought Lauren's eyes to tears as she tried not to laugh. Cadence and Celestia quickly ran over in an attempt to calm the mare down before she lost her concentration. The mare's snickering only grew as both princesses desperately tried to calm her down, and then Celestia tripped on currency. From outside of the castle, the stained glass window suddenly became black, and no light passed through for days. It's nice to see that Alex and Lauren have met Cadence, and they seem to be good friends with her. Although that dust bomb, though, that's gonna be one hell of a time to clean. Anywho, let's get on to our very clean donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkside, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Magazine, Crazy Killer 557, Dosbo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Cadge, Rune Scythe 9852, Hudson Orman, Stephen Bingham, McDoofus 456, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Ponyman, Tal Raja, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyuchia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kids and A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Need to Life, Milan Biahanek, and many more perfect people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.